Great afternoon, great afternoon. We're excited once again about the Word of God. And we are excited because I've been doing some studying and all of us in this realm is experiencing tests and trials. We are being tested and we are being tried. And as I'm listening to the various testimonies, the Lord kept dropping my spirit about children of faith, children of faith, children of faith. Well, children of faith is, is your faith is being tested, whether or not you are actually a child of faith, whether you are actually the planting of God. And therefore, regardless, and, and as I was talking to um, my son in New York, we was talking about the Hebrew boys. We talked about Dan, uh, Daniel in the lion's den. We talked about uh, the first church and all these things is talking about the children of faith. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to sing and this song and then we're gonna pray and the song that says oh lord you are awesome all because of your love all because of your grace i don't know where i'd be without you lord you are awesome hallelujah lord you are awesome all because of your love all because of your grace. I don't know where I'd be without you. I don't know where I'd be without you. And that's what came to me with all the things we're going through. Remember, the Bible says that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the one who begun the, uh, the work in us. My husband's been out, but now he's come back now. But just now, I'm going to do this quick little video because... I am excited to to hear in the spirit realm, first of all, God begun the work in us. God will perform the work through us, and he will finish what he started. He's already counted the cost. So that's what I said, Lord, you are awesome. He's an awesome God because he has purposed us to be the seed of the seeds of promise. That's what I was going to tell the, 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 the seeds of promise. We are the seed of the promise of God. We are his seed. Uh, and I, I was entitled the, the promised seeds. And because it really one seed, we are born of God's spirit, which the Holy Spirit is the promise that God will give all the way back to Abraham. When he told Abraham, you're going to bear a son. And they try to, uh, uh, you know, think, but, you know, maybe God missed it. So he's going to give him the handmaiden. But God said, no, I said to you that Sarah shall conceive. Then I thought about, uh, God telling Abraham that your children will be down in Egypt for 400 years, afflicted, afflicted in affliction. And then they would they cry out that he is going to send a deliverer. And so throughout the scriptures, I'm finding out that every single one who is the promised seed, who have the promised seed in us, which is this promise that was given in Genesis, the, uh, the third chapter, verse 16, are children of faith. And God has purposed us to be transformed and to, um, to be the, the children of faith. And our faith is now being narrowed down to Christ. We are born of the Spirit of God through Christ. And regardless of all the seeds that's in the world now, because we was talking today, the other day about God um, calling the Pharisees, you know, generation of vipers. But when God said he's making a new thing, a new thing, he's making a new thing according to his word, which is the promised seed children, the children of promise, which God said, I will do a new thing and shall you not know it. And so Genesis, we're going to pray. Let's follow. We thank and praise you for this. This, this is bubbling up in me. I thank and praise you that you have have brought us and through your word you have birthed us and that you have called us and that you're creating us we are being transformed our minds are being renewed and we're putting on christ we pray that this word will fall on good ground take root in our lives it's in jesus name we pray amen so in between what i'm doing what i'm going to go back to genesis the third chapter verses 16 unto the woman he said well first he spoke to the serpent okay <laughs> And he said to the serpent in the 14th verse of the third chapter, And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and the dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. That's to the serpent. And 
I will put enmity between thee and the woman. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. And then he says, and this is a whole mouthful that he spoke to the serpents. The serpents already know God already put a word over him. Okay. And then it says to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrows and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy uh, desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Mm. Okay. My husband just went, mm. <laughs> But I'm excited about the seed. Okay. So now we're going to go into the seed, which we know when we talk about the sower went forth to sow the seed, takes us to the book of Matthews. That God, and you know, the seed that's being sown is the word of God. It is his word, as the scripture declared, God chose the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel, whereby men might be saved. Okay, now he gives us the parable in the 13th chapter of Matthew, and beginning at the, um, let's see, I'm going down to verse, uh, I'm going to go up to 19, of the kingdom. Uh, let's go up to, let's start at the mystery of the kingdom of heaven and the sower. Okay, this is, a, this is important because as I'm listening and all the things that we are being tested and tried for, when he says for us not to um, go by what we see, but to declare and decree and, and um, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. So how do we have faith? in things that are not seen and the things that we're hoping for because God now has his seed in us. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we are now uh, uh, connected with God, which God is the creator. He is the one who creates and speaks those things that be not. God speaks those things that be not, okay? And so he has taken us now and, and, and transformed us into his kingdom and now through his word. The first verse of... Matthew 13 says, and the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. We talked the other day about the seaside. Okay, we talk about the seaside representing the world. Okay, but this was a literal sea. But it, just think of it as the whole world. And a great multitude was gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, behold, a soul went forth to sow. And he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. Okay, the fowls, we mean those are the birds that come. As soon as he sowed it, he sowed the seed, and it fell by the wayside, okay, of the, of the land. And the fowls came and ate it up. And if you know anything about seeds, when you throw seed, grass seed out, the birds come down and eat them up, okay? It says, some fell among stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith, they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun came up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. So he's talking about this, uh, um, sowing the seed. And if you ever plant any seed, you can see if you plant it and you don't have enough uh, uh, earth to it, it it's going to eventually uh, die. But others fell into good ground and brought forth much fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, he's not just talking about having a natural ear. He's talking about a spiritual ear. Okay. And his disciples came and said unto him, Why speaketh thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance, but whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that which he has. So God is speaking these words in parables so that the people who is supposed to receive it will, will understand it. And those other ones, they're trying to figure out, well, well, he's talking about a seed. He's talking about earth. He's talking about birds. What is he talking about? Okay. But God said his sheep hear his voice. They understand him. Okay, it says, for whosoever have it to have shall be given and he shall have more. 
And that means that God will give us greater revelation, knowledge of understanding of what he's doing. Okay. Therefore speak I to them in parables because they see and see not hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Okay. Which saith, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive. Okay? For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are this see. When it's talking about God is using the preaching of the word. And I was thinking today, I said, everything that forms your psychic and, and enter into you comes in through your eyes or your ears. It comes in through your eyes or ears is what you see, the images and the things. Or it comes into your ears. And I was talking to my son today about um, the various um, Greek mythology and the various universities and all the things that are spoken to them in the schools of higher learning. They begin to form a belief. That's why God said when he saw his word, his word will enter into the hearts of the children that he has predestined to be the children of faith because they will put their faith in God. That's why I said faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How can they hear without a preacher? So God is using his word. Just like the university. When people start, they believe in um, the Greek mythology and they believe in, in, in fairy tales. And they believe those words are sown to them. Of the adversary begins to sow seeds and they begin to form a, a belief in their situation. Our children, when it comes to uh, cartoons and various things, these are words that enter in through their ears and enter through their eyes and it begins to form a belief in them. And remember, the Bible said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And that's me having faith in God and hearing his word. But it says, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. God has blessed our eyes and he has blessed our ears to hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which is sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. But he that receiveth the seed into the stony place, the same is he that heareth the word of God anon with, and for a while with joy rejoices. Yet has he no root in himself, but doeth for, endureth for a while for when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. What, because the riches are promised to these people through Satan. He said, if you bow down to me, I will give you the kingdoms of this world and I will give you these riches. And a lot of people are really, uh, the, the word is taken from them because they're in the midst of thorns. Which David talked about the thorns and briars uh, of, the, uh, of this world is, is in other words men who are just talking about brides which is a whole nother story uh, the seedfulness of riches choke the word and he become unfruitful but he that receiveth seed unto the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold and sixtyfold then he began to talk a little bit deeper another parable put he forth praise God and uh, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, okay, talking about the wheat and the tear growing together and brought forth fruit, then appeared the, tear, the tares. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, did us not... 
thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hast the tares it? Please forget my husband's listen to the radio. He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant saith, said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, let's... Oliver, could you cut that down a little bit, please, honey? Oliver, huh? could you cut that down a little bit, please? Oh, yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to be finished in a minute. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, which is we know it's the angels, gather ye together first the tares, bind them together in bundles, getting them ready to be burned, but gather the wheat unto the barn. Uh, and it says, um, we're going to go down a little bit further to verse 38. Another parable put he forth unto them. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it come, when it is grown, it is the greatest among the her herd, the herbs. Becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is likened to leaven when a woman hid and took in a measure of wheat. So when he goes down, we're going to go a stick, a, go down a little further. But please read all the way down to verse 36. And that's where I'm starting now on the 13th chapter. Then Jesus sent his multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. So he took his, now he, he spoke to the whole multitude, but now he's speaking to his disciples privately. It's the disciples came to him uh, and the multitude went away. There's times when God would only speak to those who are his to give them understanding. Declare unto us the parable of the tares. And he answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man, which is Christ. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Now God is telling his disciples this. The good seed are the children of the kingdom because God has birthed the good seed through his word, through his promise. They are the promised seed. Thank you, Jesus. And we saw that the enemy came in and sowed his seed. It said the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that soweth them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who has ears to hear, let him hear. And so when God has birthed us, and the reason that you know that you are in the kingdom, because the scripture clearly said, uh, if, 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 no, if you don't have the spirit of God, you are none of his. When you receive the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of promise, he is the spirit of promise and you are born of the Holy Spirit. Now you have been, you are in the kingdom of God and you are God's uh, seed birthed through the word of God, which is believing in Christ Jesus, confessing with your mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead and receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The seed of promise, the children of promise is what we are. And even though, as we see uh, the children of promise, those who, which we talk about, um, the seed sown among those who count the riches of this world as their safety. Uh, they count uh, various things as their, their stronghold. Thank you, Jesus. But there is no stronghold except in God, okay? I was talking today earlier about, um, about Job. And Job's uh, wife said unto him, you done lost your children, and you done lost your cattle, and you done lost your health. Why don't you just curse God and die? 
Okay, but Job was a seed of God, a promised seed. He was a child of faith. His faith was in God. And the Bible said God knows, and every single one of us are being tried. We were talking today, um, when, if, if, if everything is gone, in fact, I read Habakkuk just straight through. I just read Habakkuk because Habakkuk talks really about the time of the Antichrist. If you read Habakkuk, it talks about the Antichrist. And I may read that the next time and elaborate a little more. But he said, even all these things, be not being the bond, he is going to stand and wait on God. And I think the children of faith, because our faith is not based on our houses, our clothes, our credentials. It's not based on that. Our faith and trust is in God. That's why the song said, Lord, you are some, all because of your love, all because of your grace. I don't know where I'd be without you. I don't know where I'd be without you. I mean, really, if everything is gone, as, as, as David said, you know, just don't take your Holy Spirit from me. <laughs> okay. I may lose everything else on this side because all the things on this side is temporal, temporary. They're only temporary. The only thing that we have that's, that is eternal is the word of God and God, hallelujah, putting our faith, trust in God. Everything else on this side is going to be coming to naught, okay? And Habakkuk said, which I read, it's just three chapters in Habakkuk. But if you read it out loud, you're going to hear how, because we was talking the other day about uh, hid, you know, to be hid. As I read the other day where he was telling Jeremiah to take these um, great stones and hide them. And then and, and, uh, Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon was going to cover them with his royalty. So God is going to always preserve his seed. They're coming back to me too because he said not one part, one of his seed, even though he's shifting the whole world, not one of his seed is going to fall to the ground. He's not going to lose one of his seed that's birthed according to Matthew's uh, 13 chapter. You read all of them. Okay. You read the whole 13 chapter of Matthew's. And because the, the seed is the promised seed and God who has begun the work in us will perform it. We are destined to be in God, the creator, the new creation. Thank you, Jesus. And Habakkuk said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vine and the labor of the olive trees shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stall. Yet. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he shall make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singers on my string instruments. And this is what the Lord is saying. We are children of faith. And it's not about, well, my house or money. So it's not about any of those things. It's not even, it's about our relationship with God, that God is keeping us. We are hid. In fact, the Bible said we are hid in Christ. We are hid. You know, I may do a Habakkuk because um, we are hid in Christ. There are going to be some times and testing come. But if everything is gone, thank you, Jesus. As David said, just long as you don't take your Holy Spirit from me, Lord. I just want to stay, make sure I'm staying connected. It's not about jewelry. It's not about stuff because Look, storms are taking whole houses. Storms are taking everything. Banks are going bankrupt. Everything is, is crumbling. Crumbling. But if you have God and God is keeping you, nothing's going to be lost. Okay? Because that's the main thing. I was looking for this word hid in me because I was thinking the other day. But now I see. I, had, I thought I had wrote it in, in um, another book. But now I'm seeing this in Habakkuk. So listen. Lord, the God is awesome. All because of his love and all because it's great. Read Matthew's the 13th chapter. It's talking about the promised seed of God. All the way back from Genesis to uh, Matthew's the 13th chapter and, and closing with Habakkuk. Okay. And, and, and I'm closing with Habakkuk, but I think I'm going to have to deal with Habakkuk because I read Habakkuk. Just read the third three chapters of Habakkuk out loud and you will see it's talking about the Antichrist. It's talking about what's going to happen. It's a lot of prophetic stuff, which the whole Bible is prophecy throughout okay but i want you to 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 be joyful regardless of what comes commit the keeping of your soul to the creator the maker of heaven and earth and the enemy as we saw in matthews the 13th chapter the enemy is 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 is, is 
see some seed is soul, but because of the riches of this world, people are going to be lost. Because they're going after these riches, which is that riches don't fly away. Some of them are going to go off it because they are messing with the thorns. You know, just the wrong kind of people. Just all this kind of stuff. But the word of God, which is the children of the kingdom of God, is hold, held in the hands of the Lord God. And nobody can take us out. You a child of faith, keep holding on. And keep believing and keep on declaring and keep on singing. And is it, uh, Habakkuk said, to the chief singer on my string instrument. He going to continue to praise God. And that's what we got to do. Lord, you awesome. Whatever's going on. Okay. I just had, I've been doing some more studying, which I'll probably get back to that. But today, after talking and, and listening to various um, challenges that's coming in the lives of people. When you come down to it, you know, if you get to the point where, Lord, all I have is my faith in you. And, and that's why you talk about the woman who came to the offering. And, and the one person put in a whole bunch of money and she put in her few little pence. And Jesus said she went back to her house more justified because she put all. If you give your all to God, which is you, everything else is insignificant. It really is. Okay. And we can't have our fortresses built up on anything that's on this side. The only thing on this side that we can hold fast to and that shall keep us is our faith and trust in the Lord. And, and his word hid in our heart. Okay. So we pray. Uh, if you're going through anything, put your faith and your trust in the Lord God Almighty. Okay. C commit the keeping of your soul to the creator. All right. And know that God, the promised seed, which Jesus spells it out um, and explains it. Read the whole a chapter of uh, Matthew, the 13th chapter. Read the whole thing. It's 52 verses. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed in the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is a household holder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new, so this is it. The, see, it's the end of the world he's talking about is coming. But every scribe, that's a person who, like you would say, we will be like uh, keeping the word and staying with the word of God, is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. It's likened to a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure. And God is going to continue to give us greater revelation, which he says in the 13th chapter. When you make God as the center of your joy, He's going to give you, as he told his disciples, when the multitude had gone away, he expounded on it even deeper to let them know what was really happening. Okay. And they pinned it. If they had not pinned it in this Bible. Okay. And that's why a lot of people say they're going to try to get rid of this Bible. They're trying to get rid of write a new Bible. In some countries, they're writing a new Bible. It's going to leave out so that the people who know God, they think that, you know, they're going to be able to uh, uh, beguile them and, and give them a new way. My son and I was talking this morning and we was talking about all of the things that people learn. He was talking about um, uh, this particular statue, which has like arms and feet. And anyway, I, I can remember the name of it. But he was saying this, you know, he said, Mom, you didn't learn this and none of this stuff. I told him, no, I, I missed all that education. But I kind of think I'm glad I listened because everything you learn is he's talking about the enemy came and sold his seed. Our children is, is his Greek uh, is um, all kinds of beliefs, ancient beliefs, um, all kinds of thoughts that has nothing to do with the true and living God. And they are just flooding their souls with these things. And when they come to listen to the, to the uh, I was talking to him today, I said, when I first started going to uh, the church, I grew up in the 60s and 70s. They had vampires and they had bewitch and all kind of program. And these children, it, it, it developed and formed your psyche and your inside of you. And then when you start looking at things that relate to God, you want to attribute it to something evil. I think they were talking about the symbol of the, um, of the health symbol going back to 300 uh, BC, which is trying to tie it to one particular man saying he's the father of healing. But healing goes back to God. Anything that tries to come in between you and God is trying to make itself a God. Okay, that's why, and it comes through the knowledge. 
that you have learned through universities and, and, and mythology and uh, all kinds of stuff, through various uh, uh, groups teaching you about various other things that has nothing to do with the word of God. It's there as a thorn to take the word out of you. But I'm telling you, God is going after his sheep and bring them back to him. And we're going to pray, okay? Father, we thank and praise you. First of all, you know those that are yours. You have predestined them. And you said, even if nobody goes out on the hillside to get your sheep, you're going after them. We thank you for returning all of your children, opening up their eyes, opening up their ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. We thank you for the way, the truth, and the life which comes only through Christ. He is the light of the world. Thank you, and you, thank you for the light of Christ flooding the very depths of our souls, even to our conscious and subconscious and in all the way down in the very depths of our soul, that the light of the truth will radiate through us. We pray for every single soul that hear this YouTube and that it will fall on good ground, this teaching, and that they will meditate on your word and that you will open up those prison doors and set the captives free. For we commit ourselves into your hands. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. Amen. Okay, so <laughs> we're getting excited again. Please push the like button. Listen, read Matthews. Go back to Genesis and see the conversation between the that God had with the serpent and with the woman and the promise that was given. Okay? And read all of Matthews. All of Matthews. Okay? That's the main thing we're going to, and then uh, you can read her back of what he says, but I'm going to go and probably deal with her back because after reading her back I could see him speaking about the time of the Antichrist as I was reading it out loud. So read the word out loud. If you can't have someone else, read it out loud to yourself, okay? And then it gets into your ear because the word of God is spirit and it is life. The word of God, what God has said is spirit and life, Okay. And we pray, please continue to follow, push the like button, and follow, as Paul said, as we continue on following the unction of the Holy Spirit. And that this word will fall on good ground, take root in us, because God himself is the author and the finisher of our faith. He has begun this work, uh, and he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We are putting our trust, regardless, there's nothing on this earth. And remember now, when we put our faith in certain things, when these things are gone, then we are downcast, we are depressed, we are unhappy, all the kind of stuff like that. Okay? When God is supposed to be our joy and our peace. I pray that this YouTube channel is in challenging you to get into your Bible and let your Bible get into you. You are clean through the words which God has spoken. You are clean through the words which he has spoken. Okay? So read it out loud and talk to him. He's right there. He's omnipresent, all-knowing, and all-powerful. Pray that this word is falling on good ground. This is a time when a lot of people is going to be tested. Okay? Tested and tried. Okay? And the Holy Spirit is here as our teacher and guide, which is the Spirit of God himself. And you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I pray that this youtube channel is really becoming a blessing to you and that you are mindful that god is in the world it, the holy spirit is here to help you and to lead you to christ lead you to the way the truth and the life which is in christ okay push the like button and continue to encourage someone else to to join this youtube channel as the lord takes me through things and i'm experiencing it you know uh, there's not enough time to talk about all the things that you experience, but God always leads us with a scripture, okay? And Matthew, the 13th chapter, you need to think about that, okay? And the good seed is the children of the kingdom because they have received the word. He said, my sheep, hear my voice. You're going to hear the voice of God, and it's going to draw you to him, okay? Please push the like button. This is it. And please continue to follow as we continue to be led by God's spirit. Be blessed. Amen.